Okay, thanks everyone for having me. My name is Kalai, and I would like to hopefully inspire you about the business potential also, which you can find on rooftops. Uh, so first I'll give you just a quick introduction about Moss, um, the firm I work at in Amsterdam. Then I want to walk you through a variety of rooftop types. What's interesting in the last presentation is where it was very uh, much divided by cities. Now I'm gonna break it down one scale further uh, into building types. Then we'll look at a few value domains as well as revenue models. And for each one of these building types, I'll show you a case study. So time is a bit short and I have a lot to share with you. So please, uh, if I'm rushing too much, uh, just talk to me in the break. So at Makers of Sustainable Spaces, we design green oases in and on top of buildings. Uh, we work with Indoor Green. This is a project called Jules, which we did in Amsterdam. Outdoor Green. This is a retrofit uh, rooftop we did also in Amsterdam. And Edible Green. This is above a restaurant in Utrecht. So we look how to make a green development by looking into all the technical aspects as well as the creative programming and also uh, consulting for how to make a business on a roof. And please uh, know I will share this PDF with everyone in the room. So don't feel like you have to rush and take notes or uh, a photo or something. So at Moss, uh, we believe in these five principles. Uh, which the first is that the plant is the hero. Uh, we really like to honor plants in our designs. And with that, uh, the second point, no plant stands alone. Uh, when you see nature, you never see one plant on its own. It's always an integrated ecosystem where all the plants are also helping each other out in the whole system. So we try to bring that also into our designs for the city as well. Further into that point, uh, do not add but integrate green so when we can as much as possible, we want to sit with the planning of the project from the first steps so that we can really seed our ideas into the architecture and make it a part of the building. And the fourth one, uh, where's the food? Uh, if we think about even turning one fourth of the ornamental green into edible green, we're opening up a lot of opportunity to produce healthy, hearty calories for the urbanites. And last but not least, uh, we're always striving to honor biodiversity, integrate local species, and also um, incorporate new plants. I'll just go. Uh, so the reason why we work now with green, I'm sure all of you are already aware, but people feel good in green spaces. And as we've been developing our cities in the past, let's say 150 and 100 and, and 100, 50 years, we've been pushing green further and further out of our cities, but uh, now we're aware of the uh, negative impact that this has on us that live in those cities. So now we can actually see when we're putting more green in our spaces, we perform better, we're happier, less uh, absent, less sick, and um, more productive. So I would like to show you now um, types of roofs uh, namely eight types and I will show you a variety of different value domains. Uh, this describes what's the benefit that this roof gives. Is it for the community? Is it for people with disabilities? Is it for school children? And so on. Then I will also show you case studies uh, for each of the building types from North America, Europe and Asia. And then I will walk you through four revenue models, which I've identified, and all of the case studies. The first one I want to show you is rooftops on hotels and Horeca projects. Um, so what you have is the possibility to, of course, ameliorate the environment, uh, but also provide some food security, and most uh, valuably, Financially, you can add value to the real estate. So I'll just jump ahead and show you this case study. Uh, this is a project we actually worked on in Amsterdam uh, called Hope on top of the Hotel Casa. And uh, this was completed in 2016. And although this rooftop is only 180 square meters, uh, the return on investment was gained after just two seven month seasons. And so the design of this project along the perimeter on the outside 
You can see here on the perimeter of the roof, we have a biodiverse kind of cloak. So we have um, all local perennials and grasses and so on along the outside. And inside, all of the crops um, are grown as edible plants. And then these plants are integrated into the menu for cocktails and snacks. Um, so now you see this roof, uh, there's nobody really on there. But when you're there in the summer, it's uh, totally packed. Everybody wants to be up there. There can even be a line out the door. Um, and more than that, uh, this rooftop underneath the entire surface, even below the wood panels, has a water storage system. So water storage, edible crops, biodiverse plants, and a trendy menu with a nice view, I think is what really stands uh, this project apart and which was able to attract so many people and create a, a really viable business model. Another rooftop type which is important to consider is on top of shopping centers. And just to dive into something real, uh, this is the Namba Parks in Osaka. And perhaps sometimes you've uh, been on your Saturday, Sunday wondering, well, you know, I really need to run errands, but I would much rather go to the park. <laughs> Yet this is a scenario where you don't have to choose. So this is on top of uh, a large shopping center where you can actually um, ascend from the public level on the sidewalk to every single level in the shopping center. And each level has access from the park. So this is uh, more than a hectare surface area and fully integrated uh, into, the, into the project. And this project really began with um, the idea of how to mitigate the urban heat island effect, which Osaka suffers from. And uh, they found that 30% of the energy has been saved due to the density of green on this project. Yeah, more than 70,000 plants sit on this rooftop, and it was designed by the Yerda Partnership. Uh, school rooftops are also uh, a great way to engage um, children with uh, food security, um, as well as horticultural therapy, and just good old leisure as well. I'd like to show you this project in Chicago um, which is about 800 square meters. It was completed in 2006. And uh, the crops you see here are integrated into the cafeteria, as well as sold at the local farmer's market. And uh, it's really like an outdoor classroom. So you see that the classes are all looking out onto the garden. And uh, a lot of the exercises are then completed uh, in, in the roof garden as well. So we can also look to the rooftops of hospital centers. Um, horticultural therapy has a great value in uh, any kind of transformation um, in, in a healing process. And you can find uh, this to be really suitable on hospitals, rehabilitation centers, as well as elderly homes. And uh, the model I'll show you is about uh, restaurant-supported agriculture. So on this rooftop in Paris at the Robert Donat Center, uh, what I'd like to point out is uh, all these planters were designed so that they're very comfortable also to access from a wheelchair. And uh, yeah, it makes it really accessible, really uh, able, uh, makes no barrier so that uh, all people on this roof can get their hands uh, into the soil and also just to have this aroma therapy in the lavender garden and also to have the the same joy to pick a strawberry uh, it really um, can be incorporated into the therapy process uh, parking garage rooftops provide perhaps the most substantial uh, possibility for a retrofit because you have the structure. Oftentimes uh, you already have elevators, so how are you going to move soil up and down uh, your rooftop? And uh, it pr uh, provides a lot of ability to make a roof farm. 
and uh, a project which maybe you guys are already quite familiar with that's not so far from here and Copenhagen I heard someone say they were from Copenhagen <laughs> Uh, this is the Ostergrow, uh, where I had the pleasure of uh, farming on that rooftop myself uh, for a couple months uh, a few years ago. And uh, this uh, is actually located on an old car auction house, uh, where they had indeed great structure, a big elevator, and uh, full sun on their terrace. Uh, this rooftop is built up as a uh, intensive roof garden and uh, over here this greenhouse is used uh, also for seeding young plants but as well for hosting dinners so uh, thanks to this rooftop um, there's a steady flow of income coming to this roof in fact the crops on this roof are grown for a CSA community supported agriculture where 40 members each week can come and pick up a box of fresh food. Uh, however, the CSA membership fee is only really enough to turn on the lights and provide the water on this roof. It's actually this dining experience, which is uh, bringing people back uh, again and again to enjoy the view, the atmosphere, and also to learn more about local food production. On institutional rooftops, uh, it's of course important when you're in a work day that you have a space where you can go outside, take a breath, immerse yourself in a garden. And an urban space is sometimes the most uh, accessible place you could find is on your rooftop. So on offices, convention centers, community centers and so on, you can find spaces where you could host community supported agriculture, restaurant-supported agriculture, or even market-supported agriculture. So if we look at this rooftop, which is actually above my office in Amsterdam, uh, we designed that in 2015. And um, this roof garden is uh, yeah, often used by the people of this building, where we are a hub of startups and small companies. Um, People love to come up here just to have a chat, to have a meeting. Although the lunch is served on the ground floor, a lot of people take their lunch upstairs um, just to enjoy the view. There's plenty of different seating scenarios. So if you want to sit by yourself in a quiet area or if you want to sit with your team of five, um, there's a, a lot of possibility. In addition, this roof is connected to um, a secondary restaurant on the rooftop and bar. And as you can imagine, uh, we're also growing crops on this roof, which are integrated into the kitchen. So what you don't see is that actually underneath this roof, we have incorporated a water system storage. And I'll just show you this diagram to explain a little bit about how it's made. So this lower level is an 8.5 centimeter crate. And on top of this crate, we snap in trays. Uh, where we're growing food, perennials, grasses, and so on. Uh, although it was not in the budget of this last project, but the third level of the system is then that you can snap in also a pergola for solar. So I was prompted a bit by David about how there's a challenge and also for retaining stormwater and also for um, installing solar. And a lot of people think, oh, I have to choose one or the other. Uh, but in fact, biosolar roofs uh, are highly efficient. And even below this roof, we can capture 71 liters of water per square meter. And we use this system in a lot of our projects for outdoor and indoor green. And um, yeah, the reason why we like to work with it is because it's very modular. And um, it's yeah, basically, when we bring these growing trays on top, it's a, it's a game of Legos to snap it into the tray. And um, what's then another big advantage is if we want to have uh, edible varieties in the summer months, basil, oregano, so on, we can place those in. And in the winter months, if we still want our roof to look nice, we can replace those trays 
uh, with more hardy varieties. So it can be continuously adapted and serviced uh, to the needs of the project. Another rooftop uh, type is a high-rise residential, which is perhaps, in my opinion, the most challenging to make a business case on. Uh, and the reason for that is because it really depends on who's living there. Um, the maintenance uh, yeah, should then be up to the people. And at this project in Malmo, there's actually um, quite an intense screening for everybody that lives in this building that they want to be a part of it. And every single balcony on this building is built uh, with 11 square meters of urban farming space, which has been specially reinforced uh, for the structure to be able to hold um, all different kinds of crops and so on. And you can also choose if you want to have your balcony then closed off with glass to extend the growing season. There are shared gardening tools, fermentation tools, all as a part of the, the community center of this building. And furthermore, there's a platform for neighbors to communicate and say, oh, I have too many uh, tomatoes, can we exchange cucumbers or so on. So um, yeah, it's a really a shared process. And last but not least is the rooftop greenhouse, which if we think about everyone wanting more local food, and we think about extending a growing season for highly efficient food production. Uh, we open a lot of opportunities for especially restaurant-supported agriculture and market-supported agriculture. One good example is the Gotham Greens in New York City, uh, which is uh, one of their locations is above the Whole Foods Market. And uh, all of the food produced on these roofs is then distributed uh, within just about a 10 kilometer radius. So hyper local, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day food production. So if we look back to the key points, um, I showed you how roof gardens, not just green roofs, but roof gardens, provide a place for people to take a break from their day to connect with the green, these are more economical than gray roofs when well-designed and well-maintained. Uh, secondly, featuring food production opens a lot of opportunity for a financial model. Structure, climate, and access are to be absolutely scrutinized in the design process. And there is no successful rooftop that exists without a maintenance plan. The last question about how to incentivize a long-term green roof project, I think really boils down to one, if people are accessing it all the time, it has to look good. If a part of your business is to host a beautiful rooftop experience, your roof has to look impeccable. <laughs> And secondly, uh, I think stormwater tax, uh, which is more of an ongoing yearly or even monthly check, uh, biannually check even, um, encouraging people to make their roofs look good over time. And as you've seen, there is absolutely no one size fits all and the opportunities are limitless. Please uh, feel free to uh, refer back to this presentation on the on the um, fact sheets where you can see more case studies and more examples. Thank you. <laughs> we'll do a poll and after the poll there'll be time for questions I believe. Um, we're running a bit short on time so it will be uh, <laughs> one question maybe. Helena, can we manage? Yeah, yeah. great. There's always room for one question. Oh, one question? <laughs> I have a question. What's a horeca rooftop? Oh, so horeca. horeca this is yeah. food, uh, bar, uh, hospitality. Food, bar. Okay, great. That was yes. a new word in my vocabulary. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and I have another follow-up question. Uh, uh, as an economist, I was really interested. Could you say briefly how would you advise a building owner to do a return on investment analysis? You gave the first example from Amsterdam return in, t in one year or two seasons. Exactly what things are in the analysis? What kind of building owner? Uh, well, just the case in Amsterdam. How did they do the re return on investment? Well, I get them 
mentee? Yeah, so uh, that case was about an accessible roof, so anybody can go up there. It's also wheelchair accessible. Um, it's also about how we met with the chefs uh, while they were formulating the menu to see what kind of herbs and crops can we provide, which make also a special menu for you. And um, yeah, it's the view, it's the green, it's the accessibility, uh, the marketing, of course. And um, yeah, even a small space, that's just 180 square meters. Uh, to me, it was clear what the cost side would be, but not how you would kind of set that against uh, some revenue streams. Some of the revenue streams are not easily quantifiable, so that was more the question. Yeah, so it's a yeah. menu. Food, drink, uh, occasionally hosting a small concert. Oh, right, okay, so it's the ta really tangible yeah. incomes. Great. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>